Uh, hey everyone, welcome to the newest episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast, 194. I'll explain what I'm doing here in a moment. Larry here. And Anthony here. So, Ant, I'm in an escape room right now. Yeah, and uh, knowing you, you're not escaping. No, it's called my hallway. And uh, luckily, okay. I have everything unlocked. Um, well, that's, that's good. Uh, any, <laughs> any specific reason why you're in motion? Yeah, um, <laughs> for all... Um, for, to pull the curtain back, I had every intention of actually doing this outside today. I just blew myself up. And, um, mm -hmm. well, as soon as we basically was ready to go with recording, God went, you know what? That's not going to happen today. And started drizzling. <laughs> and I don't know how waterproof my Mac is. Uh, so, well, I think you made the right move moving inside. You got a little exercise going up the stairs. You that know, was it. Stuff. Just a little... That counts. I'm done for the day. Uh, so awesome. forgive, Good job. Forgive the lighting because nothing's prepared. I don't have the black uh, screen up because actually, you know what? Can I just show you guys something? So this, then we'll get into it. Um, what's funny, pardon me. What's funny enough is Anthony just moved to, I mean, I guess it's known where you are now, right? Yes, I am in sunny, hot, humid Florida. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm up here on Long Island, and this past week, Hurricane, what was the name of it again? Uh, Issa Eas. Issa, Hurricane Easy e uh, decided to blow in, uh, but even though the trajectory was Florida, it decided to hit Long Island. Yeah, I think the hurricane knew that I had just moved here, so it decided <laughs> to cut me some slack. So, let me, can we... We'll be able to see this. There's the tree outside that fell apart oh, yeah, during the see. storm. Wow. Wow. Just missing my car. That that's the old car, right? Yes, which in reality I was better off if it hit it. Oh um, damn. Pick the, pick the tree up and put it no, on. No, honestly, car. and I don't know if you're gonna be able to <laughs> see it. There's the rest of the tree. Wow. Yeah, so, you got your block got slammed. Every, Long Island. I mean, I, all joking aside, I haven't seen it this bad since Sandy. Wow. Tree-wise. Tree-wise. Okay. Well, uh, I'm, so, I'm yeah. sorry that uh, there was a lot of damage done and everything. I was very grateful. I was very grateful. All we, all we had here was a little bit of rain. <laughs> that's, but that's, that's every day. Know. That's every day in Florida. In Florida, in, yeah. In Central Florida, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, again, my intent was to have fun outside, but uh, maybe next time. It is the summer. Might as well get out mm -hmm. there and uh, see what I can do. But yep. uh, now I'll be, feel... doing, I'll be doing more location stuff, too, once I'm settled into my, my real home, not this okay. current home. <laughs> Still Although, you in know, your temporary I'm in, mode. I'm in my temporary home. Although, you know, I got a nice view. You do that? Wow, it is a nice view. Yeah. Oh. So. Got a nice view. We also just realized your microphone is on your computer. Yes, that is true. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I don't have I don't have my regular setup right now, so no, we're just no. working on working what I got. That's it. That's it. So. We'll leave the light on for you. So yes. All right. Well, I'm not in a Motel Six. Let's say that. Much. <laughs> You're in a Motel Two. <laughs> Point four three seven. It's Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And I had a happiness hotel joke and everything, and I misused it. Oh well. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what are our choices for pay? A, cash. B, credit card. C, sneak out in the middle of the night. <laughs> we'll take C. Very popular choice. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Look at this. My hair is a mess. I am just all discombobulated. I just got a haircut. Very you Look at that. Like, like yourself? No, no. I actually went somewhere this time. Ooh, okay. I, did, I, I already did the pandemic haircut like three months ago. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, and you know what though? Everybody told me it came out really, really good. So considering the fact that I, I did it blindly in certain <laughs> areas, it came out fine. No, I actually went somewhere, and um, you know, it, 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 it was uncomfortable, but all right, you know, it's all right. I'll get tested on Tuesday, and I'll find out what happens. <laughs> actually, waiting for my results to come back. Ooh, fun. Yeah, yeah, folks, for one hundred twenty dollars, you can actually do a test from home. Nice. Yeah. I have to do it for work every two weeks. <laughs> nice. There you go. So, is it the, so, all yes. the way in or is it just up? Oh, uh, no, they go in. Oh, nice. Going on. In, in the nose. Sweet. I had to see mm -hmm. It's probably right. there, There's nothing up there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Anyway. Uh, so with that being said, let's get into it. I finally caught my breath here a little bit. And uh, we are going to talk some news. And um, because seeing how I was out of power for about almost two days. So I okay. kind of lost the world there for a little bit. But that's okay. The world, the world doesn't stop. Um, oh, and yes, and I've I've got some news to cover as well. Okay. Um, and uh, oh, and I, and I have a purchase story to share. Nice. Of course. Very good. Very yes. good. Uh, all right. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is uh, as I was able to get a little bit of the cell service coming back, so I was able to pull up YouTube at some point. And I watched the Intellivision um, video that was up. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who remember, Intellivision is coming back, legit Intellivision, coming back with the Amico. This, we've talked about it before. It's a uh, wonderful family. Fr it is designed to be family friendly. Mm -hmm. um, budget, uh, no game is going to be rated above an E. And as far as I know, supposedly every game is going to be an exclusive. Okay. That I'm not sure. But really the biggest thing that came out of this video, and of course I have it on pre-order, is the date. Um, this game was, the game system, was to come out this October 10th, 10-10-2020. Mm -hmm. And the head of Intellivision, uh, Tommy Tolerico. If I'm pronouncing it correctly. Tommy Tutan? Yes. I know Tommy his phone number. Well, <laughs> it's not really. Is it really Tommy Tutan? No. No. Oh, okay. No, okay Tommy, Tommy, I mean, dead. Tommy Tutan performed the song Jenny. Yeah, no, I know that. I'm <laughs> saying I didn't think Tommy Tolerico. I know what you, I know the reference. I just meant was it the actual guy, but I don't think so. But Tommy, I was going to say Tommy Tutone. Tommy Tolerico um, does a lot of, uh, you know, video game composing. He does all those live video game live albums. Um, one of which I backed about a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. And um, so he's doing the television. And what he was talking about on the video, which I didn't realize, the reason why they picked 10, 10, 20, 20, besides a cool sounding number, is because apparently that was his sister's birthday. Ah. And he went into it very little, but she, uh, clearly she passed away. But I don't know if she passed away recently or if she passed away a while ago and, and he was just upset that now they have to change the date, which at this point, mm -hmm. I don't blame them because this is more of the, the results of 2020 for them yeah. delaying the uh, thing. Not, not like a polymega situation. Right. Um, which is never coming out. <laughs> it better. So the Intellivision Amico is now going to be released April 15th, 2021. Okay. Tax day. And for those oh, who ouch. <laughs> and for those who got in on the pre-order, like yours truly, the Founders Edition, that will come out on 4321. Or as he put it, 4321 liftoff. Nice. So cute. Number. Um but I thought you were canceling all of your pre-orders because you need a car. No, no, this one was already bought and paid for. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, the bought and paid for stuff is still to go. It's there. Yeah, uh, anything that wasn't purchased, you know, that didn't hit my credit card, that stuff. Gotcha. Um, except for the uh, uh, pocket. <clears throat> so yes. the Amico, the Amiga, Amico, what? Amico? Amico. 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 Um, yeah, so that's been delayed, uh, but the video was very, uh, very interesting. They, they talked about a lot of the games coming out. A lot of them are just upgraded versions of original and television games. Mm -hmm. uh, they showed an upgraded version of Missile Command, um, uh, one of uh, like Battle Tanks, um, uh, Astro, oh gosh, doing it off the top of my head because again, my notes are all discombobulated now. But bottom line, a lot of, a lot of cool uh, newer games. Earthworm Jim, a brand new Earthworm Jim. Oh, yes, that's right. They are getting a new Earthworm Which will be exclusive to this. Um, the controller looks really cool. You know, it, it's kind of like an old school Amico controller, uh, television mm -hmm. controller uh, with touchscreen that looks very responsive. Uh, you use your smartphone for it. So bottom line, this Intellivision Amico, along with all the other pre-orders I have going on as far as systems are concerned, this one may be the first one I get in April. So we'll Okay. See. Um, the underlining under my breath mentioned, uh, that I don't know if Anthony just let that slip by or if he was going to come circle back around and call me out on it. 
uh, the analog pocket is admittedly was, the only thing. I was waiting. That yes, um, I, I I wasn't gonna do it, and then I'm like, you know what? I got till the end of September to pay this off, so <laughs> I t- pulled the trigger on it, and uh, so that one I I did pre-order uh, mm-hmm. because knowing analog, that may not come back in stock. Mm, true. So uh, yeah, well, I mean, it was only it was only going to be a matter of time, Larry, before you caved on at least one of them. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't cave on all of them. No, okay. no, I did not. Because um, the other ones coming from Japan, I kind of left those. But again, with the with the Amico, I mean, not the Amico, with the pocket, I, I just it's cool enough that I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna get legit use out of it. And again, Analog's track record is they don't always restock, or at least relatively quickly. So mm-hmm. it is what it is. But everything else, there's nothing else on pre-order right now. You know that has not been paid for already. So. All right. We'll see what happens. All right, cool. Well, and speaking of pre-orders, um, maybe I'll just get into my little shopping story. Yeah, for you. let's do it. Yeah, what do you got? Let's jump in. So, August 1st, um, the Lego NES set became available. Oh, yes. Purchase, right? So, so, <clears throat> so I made sure to jump on, you know, jump on it first thing in the morning when I woke up, even though it went on sale at midnight. I <laughs> Totally forgot about that part. But anyway, so I ordered it directly from Lego.com, right? Because okay. I'm like, okay, I need to have this. Don't mind me. Yeah, I'm listening. No, no question. Um, definitely something I needed to have. Um, granted, people are like, why do you need a Lego version of the NES? My response is, why do you need a Lego version of anything? <laughs> my response is, shut the hell up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my money. My money, my choice. Uh, <laughs> anyway. So I so I ordered it on August first. Now this isn't a pre-order; these are actually yeah, yeah. in stock. So, um, so they sold out that day, super fast. So I get the notice from Lego. They're like, oh, "Okay, you know, preparing your shipment. We're shipping it out." And I'm like, "Estimated delivery day Thursday, August 6th. Oh wow! Awesome, mm-hmm. awesome. So you know, um, August sixth shows up. I'm waiting for it to arrive. I get an email from. Um, FedEx to track, uh, went to go track my shipment. FedEx mm-hmm. is like, oh, it delivered it at three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, Wait, awesome. I'm in, like temporary. Yeah, house? I'm in temp housing, but I use this address. Oh, it's a house house. It's not, I thought you were in like no, a, no, no, a no, hotel no. or something. No, no, no. I'm in an apartment building. Oh, 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 okay, okay. No, I'm in an apartment building. Okay. So it's like a, they have a corporate. I got apartment. you. Yeah, yeah. So, so I get to notice that it, it arrives. So I'm like, all right, cool. So now I have to go downstairs to the mail room because that's where everything goes. I can't, you know, it doesn't put the data. Like my dormitory was. Yeah, kind of, uh, yeah, kind of like that. But, you know, um, so go down to the mail room, like, hey, you know, I have this, uh, you know, did you guys get a package for me? And they're like, okay, let me go look. And they go and they look and they come back and they're like, no. And I'm like, <laughs> uh oh. I'm like, well, I was like, I have a, you know, I haven't noticed that FedEx dropped something off. Are you sure? So they look, they're like, oh, let me check in the back. Maybe it was a bigger box, yada, yada, yada. Um, go back, look around. I'm standing there waiting. They're like, no, there are no packages for you. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> go. Okay. Call FedEx. I'm like, yeah. hey, um, I got to notice that you guys delivered, um, you know, delivered a package for me. They said it arrived here at 3 o'clock. It's 4.30. I went downstairs. It's not there. And they're like, oh, well, we'll look into it. <laughs> da, 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 da. You know, they, 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 they put me on hold. They look it up. And they're like, yeah, no, it was delivered at 3.04 p.m. And I'm like, no, it wasn't. I go, <laughs> I'm downstairs in the, you know, I'm downstairs with the assistant manager of the building. That gives me my, pa- you know, that gives me yeah. my packages. I go, they don't have anything for me. I go, and now it's almost 5 o'clock. I'm like, so clearly it's not here. And they're like, okay, fine. Let me go. Let me do some more stuff. And all and everything that. And I'm like, they're like, is your address correct? I said, yeah. I go, yeah. And they can, yeah. you know, they confirm the address. And I'm like, and I'm in apartment 607. And they're like, well, we have some conflicting information here. And I'm like, what's, <laughs> I'm like, what's conflicting about it? They're like, well, the driver said he delivered it to apartment 615. And I'm like, why would he deliver it to apartment 615 if it says 607? I go, and I'm like, he can't deliver it to the apartment <laughs> because he has to bring it to the mail room. So there's yeah, yeah. no reason. Yeah. So whatever. So they're like, all right, fine. We'll look into it. Bottom line is I didn't get it. Oh no. I'm there saying was not there. So, you know, so get a case number. 
oh, you know, um, we'll, we'll contact the driver. When he gets back in, we'll talk to him. Call tomorrow. Fine. So yesterday, yeah, or not yesterday, Friday, mm -hmm. next morning, next day, call FedEx. I'm like, hey, did you guys talk to the driver? They're like, oh, well, we need 24 hours. Da, da, da. I said, well, you guys told me you were going to talk to the driver when he got back. <laughs> and I told them, I said, look, I was like, I was like, if, if you guys lost this thing, I go, I can't get another one. I go, they're sold mm -hmm. out. I was like, yeah. and these, you know, in Lego, I don't know if they're going to make any more because you know how they do limited quantities. Yep, stuff. yep. So like, all right, well, um, you know, so they're like, well, and I go, what happens if this thing is lost? I go, do you give me a refund? They're like, no, you have to contact, <laughs> you have to contact the place you ordered yeah. it from. I said, well, why would they give me a refund if you lost it? <laughs> and they're like, well, they'll give you a refund and then they'll, add, and then we'll give them a refund. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, whatever. All right. So anyway. So I'm like, okay, great. I go, you know, there goes, uh, you know, there goes, uh, there goes my Lego item. And <laughs> so then uh, yesterday afternoon, I go down to the mail room because I ordered something else. <laughs> um, well, you know, I, I mean, I just moved here. I'm like, oh, it's like, you know what? I need clothes for work. I need different mm -hmm. things. And I'm like, so, and I don't have my stuff yet. You know, I'm in 10 houses. Yeah, so all yeah. my stuff is, in you know, in a storage facility somewhere. All your stuff is in apartment uh, 612 or whatever it was, 615. Or 615, yeah. yeah. All my stuff's in apartment 615 waiting for me. That's the joke. So I go downstairs to pick up another pa uh, another package, and they come out with this box. And I'm like, oh, this is the Lego set. <laughs> and I'm like, I, didn't, I just asked them. I said, did this just arrive? They're like, we don't know when this arrived. I was like, Okay. <laughs> It got there before you did. It's like a whole it back probably, to the future thing. It probably thing. did. So the bottom line is it did show up. I have my Lego NES set. And I'm going to show it to you, but let me tell you something. I don't think it's going to fit on the screen. Oh, my God. That it's box is way already, big. Is it already assembled in the box? It might be. I mean, can you see all of it? I can, we can see it. Can't necessarily hear you, but we can see it. Yeah. Yeah. So look at the size of this thing. That is ridiculous. Okay. Well, oh my God, look how wide it is and thick. Yeah, I mean, it's, well, because you get, look, I don't know if you can see up No, I, yeah, no, we can definitely see it, absolutely. You got, you got a whole freaking television Holy. and then the NES set with the controller and the cartridge. Yeah, that is, wow, I know, but the idea is you, it's supposed to be in pieces. They should have no, just no, sent you a stack. No, no, it's in pieces. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, so I got that. So I got that thing. Obviously, I'm not putting it together until I move. Obviously, yeah, it makes but, sense. Uh, yeah, wow, so that's pretty cool. Move. It's it's massive. Heavy? Uh, yeah, no, it's got heft. It's definitely got weight to it. So, um, and then for ordering it through Lego.com, I also got this cute little um, mushroom expansion pack oh, for okay. the for the Super Mario Lake. The yeah, the other the regular connect set. with starter course. Mm -hmm. Lego set, which I didn't buy, but I'm like, you know, I was like, okay, so I got a little extra thing. That's a little something. Very cool. Yeah, but I'm more, I, I was more interested in this because, you know, this is going to be a cool little display. No, that is very cool. Yeah. And, and a lot uh, bigger than I would have expected. Wait, I'm, oh, I'm wait, curious. Wait. What? I'm, I'm curious to see what size the actual TV is. Uh, that's what I was about to ask. Is this thing, I don't think it's uh, life size. Oh, you know what? It tells you right here. The television yeah. is a 55 inch. No, so the TV, the, the TV is basically 8.9 inches tall and 9.4 inches wide. Okay. And then the NES is 8.1 inches wide by 2.8 inches high. Yes, because the NES was as wide as our televisions. Yeah, basically. <laughs> but, see, but the cool thing about it too is like if you look at the back, like if you look at the back of the TV, it's got like the audio video. You see uh, the hold audio it up a little video? bit. Hold it up a little bit. Uh, here. You see the red and the yellow circles in the back? Oh, the TV has that. Look at that. It's got the AV. It's got oh, the AV that's adorable. The antenna. So, yeah, it's really. What's, yeah, that, what's that third picture? Uh, which one are we talking about? On the bottom. This one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's all I mean, black and white. It's black and white. They're showing the dimensions. I got you. I got you now. Okay. Yeah. So all in all, and then, of course, I don't know if you can see this up here. Wait, what is that? We lost you. Oh, there's a crank here. Oh, that's the crank. Yes, because that, yeah, that moves. Mario jumps yep. on the screen. And if you have the Mario from the starter set, you put him on top of the TV and he makes the noise. Yes. Yep. So I'm going to have to get that just for the movie. Uh, that anyway. is cool. Yeah, and a lot really more cool. detail than I show. It's really, really cool. I'm looking forward to putting that together. Good. Cool. Yeah. What do you got? So, Message from the big giant head? 
Uh, nope. Okay. <laughs> anyway. uh, so yeah, so that's my Lego and yes, I'm very, very cool. happy about that. Purpose. Cool. Um, I guess we're going to continue with pre-orders this week, even though last week was goodbye pre-orders. This one may be kind of sort of hello pre-orders. Hello pre-orders. <laughs> hello. Um, the uh, Arcade 1-Up. Yes. So Arcade 1-Up has, well, they've mentioned that pre-orders are now available on Best Buy. But Best Buy, I don't know if they're already out of stock or they weren't prepared to be like, no, we're not starting pre-orders yet. Um, but in any event, be on the lookout. Pre-orders are now going to be available for Ms. Pac-Man and the two um, uh, Marvel cabinets. Marvel, yes. Uh, I didn't see anything yet on the pinball machine or the big buck cabinet, but for now, Pac-Man, uh, Ms. Pac-Man and the other two. Um, some news. So are, are you pre-ordering? No, no, this I'm not. I, not the Miss Pac-Man? We're going to get into that in a moment. Yep. Okay. So first of all, just real quick with the Marvel. Um, again, I apologize. I don't, I don't have the info in front of me. But I do know that the two Marvel cabinets will be, like the NBA Jam cabinet, will be uh, Wi-Fi enabled, which means you will be able to play co-op or versus mode mm -hmm. on, uh, online with other arcade one-up cabinets which is awesome that is fantastic I yes think. um the ms pac-man machine now first of all i'm seeing two different types of machines now from what we understood when these were announced ms pac-man was going to be ms pac-man uh pac-man plus uh super pac-man and galaga but oh, is it Galaga has uh, to be. Not, not, not Galaga. Um, Galaxian. Galaxian. But some places are replacing, I think, Pac-Man Plus with Dig Dug. Ooh. That's what I were, and that's what I got from the Best Buy side. I'm just gonna actually pull up Best Buy. I I would prefer Dig Dug. Um, you know, I was. Eh, I'll take Galaxian. Um, no, you said Dig Dug instead of Pac-Man Plus. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to pull it up right now. Um, again, coming upstairs, I kind of lost all my uh, pages here. So I'm just going on. I can one up. And so, your breath. <laughs> but that's also now because I'm still talking. Uh, so right now, the, oh, that is a gorgeous cocktail table, Ms. Pac-Man. Some of a gun. Click. Oh, man. Oh, no. Look at this. You can pre-order them. They are up for pre-order. All right. So and they're, pre -order. they're retailing for 500 Mm -hmm. uh, if you have the Best Buy card, I'm sure you can get that financed. Um, what the hell is the other Ms. Pac-Man? Wait a minute. What the hell? Eh, oh, well. In any event, um, oh, you know what it is? Maybe the cocktail table is going to mm -hmm. come with different games. Oh, it could be. Let me see here. Overview. Nope. Nope. Uh, here we go. Okay. So the cocktail table. Oh, okay. This is what it is. Oh, well, this is interesting. The cocktail table will come with Ms. Pac-Man, Super Pac-Man, Pac-Mania, Pac-Land, mm -hmm. both Galaga and Galaxian, Ooh. and both Dig Dug and Dig Dug 2. Oh, that table one sounds like... Uh, that, this table... Sounds like the one to go for. Yeah. Oh, man. Only 28 bucks a month, 18-month financing with the Best Buy credit card, which I uh, own. Well, I know who's buying it now. Oh, man. Oh, hey, so, side well, note. Hold so on. Don't pre-order pre it while we're on the Wait show. a minute. Wait a minute. Side note, also available on Best Buy. You can pre-order the Lion King Legacy Cartridge Collection for the Super Nintendo. Hmm. Yeah, this is literally the first time I'm seeing this. Um, it's uh, basically a lion yellow Super NES card of the Lion King. Cool. For $100. Nice I'm, I'm recording the show. Snow, where's snow? Hold on, let me go back. Ah, where'd you go? <laughs> oh, of course, all I get is the tail end. The butt end of the cat. She literally, she literally blocked the entire screen. <laughs> See it when I'm editing. Right. Uh, Do you want to be on the show? Hey, I think you might want to check these out. The, the Lion King anniversary one, uh, uh, that sounds interesting to me for sure. Yeah, it's, it's a yellow Super NES card. But remember, these are like the way overpriced ones. So this is a pure collector's item. Right. Uh, that's still really cool. Yeah, yeah, Disney's Aladdin on Genesis 
for a hundred bucks. Uh, Mega Man X 30th anniversary. And all these are hundred. Mega Man Two. Oh, cool. This yeah, I'm just gonna send you this. Just so yeah, send me it. that link. I'll definitely look into it. Uh, very, very interesting. I have my own Lion King right here. <laughs> mm, not even close, but okay. <laughs> I just sent it to you. I actually want to get your reaction right, cool. when you see this cart. Uh, oh, um, you want me to? Uh, then I'll yeah, just. Right to, I mean, we don't have to open it. I think it's just a, you'll see the the preview screen. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. But that's pretty uh, cool. That that's available through Best Buy. Oh wow, that is really cool. So and the uh, the Aladdin, very cool. The Aladdin legacy cartridges. There's a blue one and a like a cl- not blue. I'm sorry, clear red and a clear purple. Mm-hmm. Well, I would love to say that I would jump on this pre-order, but considering I just bought the Lego NES set and I'm also in the middle of a move <laughs> into a home, uh, so uh, yeah, I got other priorities right now. Fair enough. Um, and then for fifty bucks, you can get the Nintendo Switch version of those two games. So. Right. So you're gonna you're gonna pre-order the um, hi. You're no, no. Wait. You're what? gonna pre-order the Miss Pac-Man cocktail wait a, table. Yes, that I'm gonna look into. But hold. All right. So here's another thing to look into, maybe for next week. So mm-hmm. on this is again on Best Buy. I'm just discovering this now. You can buy for thirty bucks the Disney classic games, Aladdin mm-hmm. and the Lion King, the ones that came out, you know, digital. Right. You can buy physical copy thirty dollars. Mm-hmm. There is also a retro edition clamshell version of Aladdin and the Lion King for the Nintendo Switch for $50. Oh, cool. And I can't figure out what the hell the difference is. Uh, There's got to be some description that tells you the difference. Oh, exclusive retro edition retail packaging. That's all there you go. For $20 more, you get retail packaging. Classic 90s console design. Yeah, all right. Cool. Very, very cool. Um, but in any event, so that's why, so Best Buy is actually stepping up their game, no pun intended. I'm actually nice. quite impressed at, at some of these pre-orders. I can do, I could probably do 28 bucks a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so forget, yeah, despite the fact that you've reneged basically on what you said last week. Just one thing, just one thing. Well, no, you're about to pre-order something else. No, I am, look, I am, I, well, you can't see me, but I am closing the page yeah uh, and to the open page. it later after we're done with the show i could not uh, i set it up it's gone forever let's move on How about that? <laughs> so um so we've given best buy i guess enough uh, publicity yeah i um, think we i think we did too <laughs> so um yeah so we'll be on the lookout for that um what else you got happening um i got a few things going on here one is um just a, just a special announcement that um, uh, Rare, you know, the company Rare that we know made uh, Banjo-Kazooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Battletoads, uh, Battle Donkey Kong Country, oh, yeah, all this cool stuff, yeah. celebrated on August 6th their 35th anniversary. Wow. They've been around since 1985. Cool. So 35 years. Um, and if you are a big fan of Rare, you can go to their official online store. Oh, never mind. We drop on Tuesday. That was this past weekend. <laughs> they, were doing, they were doing, they were doing 35% off everything in their online store. Ooh. Uh, That's still going on now as, as we record? Uh, yes, it's going on as of right now because today Folks, is Saturday. This episode, just watch my uh, expressions when things go into the cart. <laughs> yes, basically that's what it's going to be. So yeah, so Rare celebrating its 35th anniversary. I guess that's kind of a retro birthday for us. Um, we haven't done one of those in a while. Yeah, no, uh, I would say that. So yeah. that that's one thing uh, to talk about. I'm going to go through a couple of other things before I get to the big bit of news I wanted to share. Oh, you got bigger news? Okay. Well, no, uh, it was yes. Okay, so we'll 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 get to that in a minute. Um, <laughs> Netflix on August 19th, and I have a feeling we're going to have to do, uh, I think we're going to have to do uh, an episode on this. Okay. Um, August 19th, Netflix will premiere its new documentary series called High Score. Oh. Uh, it's going to focus on the golden age of video games. Really? Yep, and how the industry has evolved over the years. 
So August 19th, that'll be dropping. And probably the most interesting thing for us uh, about this that uh, news-wise that I've heard so far, it is being narrated by the one and only Charles Martinier, the voice of Mario, good. Super Mario. Good for him. That's yeah. awesome. So, um, so yeah. So I saw the trailer for that. So they're going to um, – and, oh, here's the description of High Score from Netflix. I'll just okay. read really quickly. High Score is a documentary series about – Sorry. Go- Whoop. What Sorry, my bad. I thought that was coming. Stop. That was on Netflix. Go. Stop interrupting me. <laughs> Uh, High Score is a documentary series about the golden age of video games when legends from Pac-Man to Doom were brought to life. Through ingenuity and sheer force of will, computer pioneers and visionary artists from around the globe spawned the iconic worlds of Space Invaders, Final Fantasy, Street Fighter II, Mortal Kombat, Sonic the Hedgehog, Madden, NFL, and beyond. Without rules or roadmaps, players and innovators alike push the limits of money to be made, rivals to be crushed, and hearts to be won. This is the story of the brains behind the pixels and how their unmatched innovation built a multi-billion dollar industry almost by accident. High Score premieres on Netflix on August 19th, 2020. All right. Now, I'm sorry. Did you say it was a series or just like a special? Uh, it says a documentary series. Okay. So okay. We're gonna, so, so it's going to be uh, several episodes. Of it. So I don't know how many. Carol Baskin should be in it. All right. Uh, she's too busy. Probably <laughs> burying another husband. Uh, that seems interesting. You know, I'm telling you, sometimes you just flip through Netflix. Uh, like I told you, that Dragon Quest movie. Uh, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, and again, it's the, trust me, I'm telling you, it's not, it's not going to blow your mind, but mm-hmm. it's a fun watch. Okay. Um, especially at the end. It takes a weird twist at the end. But uh, that was good. There's an anime called High Score Girl uh, that's also really mm-hmm. good on Netflix, an old anime. Uh, that Capcom had something to do with. Uh, and of course, everything else has to offer. All right, cool. August 19th, we'll definitely check that out. Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll do, because I finally was able to use it, uh, that screener app or whatever it's called. Scener? Oh, yes. Um, something party, right? Okay, I think we're both way off on that. But yeah, whatever you can do to, to watch Netflix with other people. Yes. Like in a chat room. Yeah, I did it with, uh, I was watching someone with Riff Tracks and they were using it. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot what it was called. I have it on my desktop, not on my laptop. Right yeah, now. you have to have it. Yeah, you can only use, with, uh, use it with Chrome. Chrome. Yeah. It's only so. Chrome, yeah. Uh, yeah, so maybe, maybe we'll do a watch party. That'd be cool. We can host our first watch party. Oh, that would be awesome. Nice. All right, so it's a $50 buy-in for anyone who wants to watch with us. Yes, because list, watching us, like, you know, type in a comment box is that exciting. No, we can set up cameras if we're smart enough. Uh, sure. And uh, talk during it. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, let's not do that. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on to other news. Fun. <laughs> I have plenty of fun. You, we just have different definitions of fun. <laughs> oh, wow, so, yes. Mine is entertaining. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, other news coming out of Japan. Oh, okay. Um, in terms of Nintendo, now we all know there's a pandemic going on. People are stuck at home, trying what? to find ways to entertain themselves. No one told me this. Well, yeah, nobody tells you anything. This reason. is true. I wouldn't um, know. Pandemic. So anyway, so Nintendo, Nintendo announced their second quarter profits. Okay. Based on now, if you remember when the um, I don't know how many people remember this or, um, but once like the pandemic started, you could not find a Nintendo Switch anywhere they still can't sold, really uh, like crazy. yeah i mean they, they're having a hard time keeping up with demand even now in august because yep. they just got they flew off the shelves so yeah nintendo for the second quarter of 2020 posted a profit 428 percent higher than last year in the same quarter wow how the so, hell did that happen they uh, be well how did it happen i just told you how it happened no but i'm saying if there's a shortage how are they what are they selling uh, uh a lot of what it was were console and animal crossing okay i can see animal crossing okay right so the the company posted um posted an operating profit of 145 billion yen which is 1.37 billion dollars not just for a quarter. Um, 
So the company said that it made, uh, yeah, so that was a 428% surge. They were actually <laughs> expecting only 62 billion yen. That was their expectation. <laughs> so they more than doubled their expectation. Yeah, they, they blew is, past it. Good for yeah, them. So, yeah, and they said um, Animal Crossing New Horizon is uh, one of the biggest reasons why they're making a ton of money. Uh, the game has already sold 10.6 million copies, which is wow. absurd. It's, it's only been out for like, what, a month? Uh, maybe a little more, but yeah, everyone I see. Um... Oh, let me rephrase that. 10.6 million copies in the most recent quarter. It has Animal Crossing has sold over 22.4 million copies. That makes it came out in, it came out right around when all this started. Yeah, which is in that insane. is insane. Absolutely. But it makes sense every time I log on to the Switch and I see people on, they're all playing Animal Crossing. I don't yeah. have it. I don't own it. I don't have it either, and to be honest with you, I don't think I've turned my Switch on in about two or three months. <laughs> uh, of course, right now I can't turn it on because it's not with me. This is true. Um, and it's, yeah, a good, but, it's a good yeah. series. Yeah, I, you know, I've never played an Animal Crossing, so I really need to just kind of... Get, I'll give it a go at some point. I've just been distracted with moving and um, my <laughs> PS4. So. You know, it's funny. Um, I just got a, uh, a thing for one of the uh, Kickstarter games I did. I think it was The Last Exile. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about that a few, few, few weeks ago. And, um, you know, I got, you get the, uh, the backer kit, you know, when you select, yes. when you finally select everything. And I sat there and I was going back and forth between uh, the Switch version or PS4 version. Um, ultimately, I, I went for the Switch. Just something mm -hmm. about the Switch. You know, I was thinking about this. I don't know what it is because, you know, we're living in a day and age of this, of technology where we got, I got a 4K television. Mm -hmm. I got an Xbox One X, a PS4 Pro, streaming in 4K, playing in 4K. Mm -hmm. But there's just something about that damn Nintendo Switch that I absolutely love that graphically, graphically cannot compete with the other two, but are still dominating the market as we speak. And I can't put my finger on it. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just curious why. Like, I, I, I'm trying to it, it's keep the thinking. Games. But the games I can get on other systems as well. Like, it's oh, one of the that's holding me over. Because, like, oh. I, all these Kickstarters, I'm selecting for the Switch. Well, because I think at the, I think at the moment, like, it's your, pref it's your preferred system. Like, well, clearly, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when, when I was traveling, you know, when I was traveling for work at my last job, you know, and I was traveling mm -hmm. to Asia every other month, um, the Switch was my go-to because... I was sitting on a plane. I can't. I can't bring my PS4 or my Xbox One on a plane. Yeah. So, um, so the Switch for a good what two years, at least two years, mm -hmm. the Switch was it. I was like, then once uh, once traveling started to die down for me a little bit, I kind of just fell into the PS4, and it's been all PS4 since then. And it's weird too because I was really debating. Um, like I was even debating as far as I only use the Xbox for PUBG. And I was, my Xbox is a paperweight. What, no, like seriously, like I was yeah. debating like the amount of games that I play on the Xbox, none of them are exclusive to the Xbox. Mm -hmm. Where, all right, fine, even if I even if I rebought the games now, because they're probably on sale on the PS4, this cross-platform play on PUBG, so I can do that, and then just keep the PS4 going. Yeah. So it's weird, all these things, and it has nothing to do with the car or trying to save money or, or anything like that. It's just no, like, no, no, no. I mean, validating. I, yeah, no, I understand that. I think as gamers, I think you get to a point where you start, you start to reassess and everything and you start to see, especially when you, especially now, because I feel like every system is trying to corner the market in some way, mm -hmm. right? And I really do think that Microsoft is trying to go more towards the cloud-based system, kind of what Google Agreed. Stadia was trying to do. So I think Microsoft is doing that, whereas Play, uh, Sony is really focusing on exclusives uh, more, more, way more than Microsoft is. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. like when I look at the list of exclusives, I'm like, Microsoft has nothing that I want. Agreed, absolutely you know? agreed. So, um, and then of course, Nintendo does what it always does. It's like, we're, this is what we do. We're not trying to compete with anybody else. We're going, you know, if you love our, if you love our characters, the our gameplay, like they, they have their formula and they stick to it and they ignore everybody else. Which also was one of the points 
uh, mentioned during the Intellivision video. They said, yeah, we can't, like graphically, we can't hang with everybody else, but we're not looking to do that. They even said there are gamers out there. There are hardcore gamers who, who just love gaming. Mm -hmm. And they're like, and that's great. And they even admit, they're like, this may not be the system for you. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the Amico is looking for that family friendly, you know, like just ease of use. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was very interesting for them to just outright say, look, we're not going head to head. We're going to do our thing. Mm -hmm. You have those gamers over there. God bless them. Good luck. But here's our little niche that we're going to be looking yeah. for. And you're right. Nintendo's kind of doing that just on a, a bigger level where they just happen to be competing with Sony and Microsoft. Right. But that's also because of their, you know, because of their history. You know, they've been around for a long time. They've been dominant for a long time. And that's why they hang with them. But they're not interested in hanging with them. They just, they just, yeah. It's, so it's inadvertent um, almost. Yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of like, I think, it, like, I think gaming companies now, you can almost look at it the way you look at streaming services. You know, everybody all of a sudden, it's like, if you want, if you want a streaming service, it's like, you have Netflix, you have Hulu, you have Disney Plus, you have um, CBS All Access, you, mm -hmm. have the, uh, you have Peacock, you have Shudder, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and if you start to look at them, you know, you have your big ones, Netflix, Disney, and all that stuff, CBS. Mm -hmm. But then when you look at the smaller ones like Shudder, right? Mm -hmm. To me, Shudder is a perfect example. Shudder specifically, we do horror movies. If you are a horror movie fan, this is the place for you. We're not interested in anybody who's not a horror movie fan. We're, we're cornering a niche market, and if this is your niche, we're for you. That, that's like what, to me, that's what Intellivision is doing. That's what Atari is trying to do. That's, you know what I mean? They're, they're going after a specific part of the market. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not to say that Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo are not. You can mm -hmm. go on, you can go online and download, like, you know, the Atari Classics collection and things like that. So they're offering that as a piece but the other you know but these companies are like this is all we're focusing on so if you're a hardcore gamer and you like this type of stuff we're for you all right and yeah you're right no no that's a great great point and uh i think just a great model for intellivision mm -hmm. uh and nintendo and, and and everybody and you know nintendo being nintendo uh they just announced that they're going to be releasing uh gosh darn it i apologize all right hush hush no can you still hear me? That's going to be the question now because I just muted. That. I can hear you just fine. Okay, all right, good. <laughs> just want to make sure. Um, Nintendo just announced a, and some people think this is smart. Some people are going to think it's lazy. Uh, they just announced uh, another game from the Wii U library that they're updating for the Switch. Uh, mm -hmm. And I never got into the series, but it's a good one. Uh, Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Yes, I saw that. Um, I think basically at this point, I think every Wii U game should just be re-released on the Switch since mm -hmm. nobody really played them. They're getting there. They're yeah, getting maybe that's why they're doing it. More because, hey, now we actually got all eyes on our system. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, have so many, we have so many people on our system now, and especially after selling them out and everything like that, it's like, hey, more content. Just stick into the Wii U catalog. Yeah, and, and you know... Um, it's, not like the, it's not like the games were bad. It's just the system no, was appealing. That's the thing. The games that they're doing are good. Uh, the last Deluxe they did was Super Mario, well, maybe not in order, but New mm -hmm. Super Mario Brothers uh, Wii U Deluxe. Um, I know they redid Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, which is kind of like yep. a deluxe version. Yep. Um, and remember, we did this with GameCube. The Wii took a couple of the GameCube games, the first Pikmin, in fact, um, and converted it to motion control. Yep. Um, pretty sure they did it with Super Mario Sunshine as well. I, I Don't quote me on that one, though. Um, so look, to me, it's smart. Um, you know, I'm always game because to, to get these kind of redone, um, modern classic. Do you want, oh, hi. Do you want to hear about the Lion King game? Is that why you're here? Uh, Svenja Baradisilaba. And all right. <laughs> I'm just going to try to add music and post every time no, she shows don't. up. I'm not there yet. Uh, hopefully everyone can, can appreciate. I'm trying my best with the editing on the YouTube. <laughs> Larry, I think, you're, I think you're doing a great job. Don't worry. Ah, thank goodness. Don't worry about it. Give me, yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be back to editing in a couple of weeks. Good. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Tired of doing it during Raw. But, uh, um, <laughs> but what, what, what else do you have before I jump into my last one? Um, oh, yeah. So the other thing real quick, because when you mentioned Atari, I just want to throw this out there. Uh, if everyone remembers, I also have on pre-order the Atari VCS. 
Yes. And that is up for pre-sale um, on some websites. If you go to the Atari VCS website itself, they'll give you more information. Mm -hmm. But I guess to try and bump up sales, that is just my opinion uh, by me saying that. Mm -hmm. They're now offering installment payments. Nice. So, uh, so you go for that. That's another one. That's going to be interesting when that comes out. It's another situation yeah. where it's old school games on a modern synth. Uh, you know what? This is <laughs> now the cat's doing it on purpose. Oh, the she's totally doing it on purpose. <laughs> she's like, you're not paying attention to me. Fine, I know exactly where to go. <laughs> right? Oh, oh my boy. gosh. Um, one week Wait. you'll have you'll have snow there. I'll have Samson on this one, and we'll just let him sit there for the entire. Yeah, well, she's coming back for another round. Uh oh, she's coming she... back for another round. Oh no, she's just sitting next. To me. <laughs> she's like, I'm done. She's like, I'm, um, done. I'm done interrupting. So check out the Atari VCS if you want installments. Uh, I yep. think that's it for me. I really didn't get the only thing I got in the mail this week was a signed Jeff Dunham uh, Popco uh, Funko Pop. Okay, you know? so none of us care about that. Wow. Um, moving on. Um, <laughs> So the, the last thing that um, the last thing I wanted to talk about really quickly is that um, on Thursday, August sixth, Sony had a state of play showcase. Oh yes, yes. So I just wanted to quickly run through that really quickly. If you guys didn't see it, um, it was specifically game oriented. They were just yeah, announcing um, some games they've already announced. It. They showed they showed some new trailers and stuff like that, but. Just to, just to touch on a couple of things with it, mm -hmm. um, Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. Um, they, went into, they went into that a little bit, and I have to say the game looks beautiful. It looks awesome. Yeah, the game looks beautiful. The gameplay looks great. Um, the, I like the, the masks that alter the boards. Yep. Um, and then for the first time ever, they announced that Dingo Dial, who was what, the villain from previous Crash games, Dingo Dial is a playable character in Crash Bandicoot 4. So he's switching oh, cool. sides. All right. Um, so you get to play as him and um, him, Crash, and Coco. And then there's another character, Dr. Something. Who you get to Cortex. Play. Doctor, there you go. Neo, he was the Dr. villain in the first Cortex. Name. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's like the horror genre. Like they start to run out of ideas, so let's make the good guy a bad guy or the bad guy a good guy. Well, I mean, yeah. Look, everybody can reform or, <laughs> you know, or go dark. Yeah. I just watched The Last Night, finally. Transformers The Last Night when Optimus went, went uh, uh, Nemesis Prime. And, oh, my God. oh, and how did, that, how did that work? You know what? I didn't mind the movie. Did, did he kill anybody? No. He, uh, well, he no. did, but only when he went back as an Autobot. Okay. Not that he was a Decepticon. But still. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so, yeah. So, Crash Bandicoot 4 is looking really good. You can check out the, tra uh, the new trailer online. So, there uh, is one. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I apologize. Yes. Go, go, go. I got one final thing to mention, and this, Ant, you are going to be extremely interested in. Well, hold, let's finish State yeah, of Play okay. before you get to that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so other things to announce in State of Play, they, uh, the, the Hitman trilogy, the original Hitman trilogy, yes. will be coming to PlayStation VR. V Ooh, that should be interesting. Yeah, so you'll be able to murder everybody in first person. <laughs> um, it's my dream. Exactly. See, you get to live out, look, you get to live out your dream. Thank you. Um, the other PlayStation VR announcement that was big, although we already knew about it, they were giving an update because I believe it is dropping on August 25th. So this month we're getting Vader Immortal, where you get to play Darth cool. Vader in VR. And that looks like a lot of fun. That looks cool. Um, the, other, the other thing they announced was that the time-bending puzzle platformer Braid is getting, oh, an yes. an, is getting an anniversary edition, and, the, and it's going to be with completely redrawn art. And when you look at it in the trailer, it looks like you're actually working your way through, like, they almost look like paintings. Like, you see, <laughs> yes. like it's like a brush stroke um, kind of design to the backgrounds. So it looks really, really beautiful. I'm definitely picking that one up. Did you ever play it? Or, I guess not. I was going to say, did you ever no. play it originally? I've never played the original one. Okay. So, and it's been on my list to buy. I've, always, I've just been waiting for it to go on sale. But I didn't realize how old it is. Yeah. Uh, I believe the original one was 2008. Yeah, maybe 08, yeah. Yeah, 2008. So that's coming. Um, Spelunky 2 is dropping on September oh, yeah. 15th. First they one. Gave a, yeah. Yep, they gave another update on that. Um, the new Alan Wake game, Control Expansion 2. There was an announcement trailer for that, uh, okay. and that looked awesome. Um, we, talked about, um, we talked about Vader Immortal. Uh, and then there were a few other ones like um, uh, Aeon Must Die, which is like a cyberpunk fighting game. Uh, Hood Outlaws and Legends uh, is a new multiplayer game coming out in 2021. 
Okay. So it'll be PS5 and then also PS4, Xbox Series X and Xbox One. Mm-hmm. Um, this one looked interesting to me. The Pedestrian that's coming out January of 21 on PS4. I can't figure out what the gameplay is. It's, a, it's puzzle- kind of a It's a puzzle game where you basically have to get your character from point A to point B, but the way, obviously, you have to connect things a certain way to get them to move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so anyway, and, and very simplistic graphics. It's kind of like a, a side-scrolling, like, you know, just stick figure almost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but looked really interesting. Um, another uh, Bug Snacks is another game coming out this year. So the um, Anno Mutationum. Right. It looks like it, I, I didn't look at the trailer. It looks like a um, a racing game. Okay. Um, and then there, there were a few other ones. I just did not get to see all of them. Um, Auto Chess, which I looked at, which I had no idea <laughs> was a thing in 2019, apparently. Or um, A U T O. A U T O auto chess. So it's like bat- it looks like it's battle chess, basically. Um, so kind of interesting there. Um, so yeah, so they basically they stuck to just announcing all kinds of games, which was great. The letdown of the state of play is every again, everybody's waiting for when is PS5 gonna be available for pre-order and how much is it gonna be? And everybody thought that this was gonna be the time the day they were gonna announce it. Clearly they did not. Well, people then should pay attention because, and I found this very funny, when uh, PlayStation announced that they were going to drop a state of play, Mm -hmm. they said in the description, uh, you know, talking about new games, updates on previously uh, noticed games, no PS5 updates. Yeah. (laughs) I find it interesting that they're just not doing it. I don't know why. Yet. Because you know why? Because look, let's face facts. Everything is in such a state of of flux. confusingness yes flux that's that's a a, a a phd word to use correct um a, oh yes and confusingness <laughs> is not a word period i didn't say confusingness i think i said craziness no you said confusingness yes um i, I don't think they want to say anything to be like oh well we got to retract that and we got to give a new date yeah. even though nowadays i think people are a little more forgiving um, where if they announced holiday, then had to push it back, as opposed to saying two years ago, right. it's coming out holiday 2021. You know what I mean? I, I well, think that's a, a little... I, no, that, that's a fair assessment. Yeah. But, you know, uh, still, we'd still like to hear some type of update. That would be nice. We will see. Considering it's only like three months away, four months away, you know. <laughs> so the final thing I want to mention, and Anne, again, this I think is going to pique your interest. Yeah. Um, so, uh, just a little local here, um, friends at Game On had posted a cartridge that they had gotten in stock for oh, the Nintendo yes. 64. I saw it. It was called Zelda Dusk and, uh, excuse me, Zelda Dawn and Dusk. The Legend of Zelda Dawn yep. and Dusk. And, you know, I'm like, what the hell is that? Yep. So, didn't know really what it was about. Here is what it's about. It's a ROM, obviously. And basically, it's the game that was going to be intended to be an expansion to the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Uh, yeah, I believe Ocarina of Time. Yes. Mm-hmm. For the 64 disk drive. Yep. That was always planned for the 64 disk drive. And obviously, yep. we didn't get the disk drive. So. so it's a brand new Legend of Zelda adventure. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just reading verbatim here from n64today.com. It uses the same assets and game engine as Ocarina of Time, but features a new world and story. The game is set in a once great kingdom now split between East and West. I have a couple. So of Berlin. There you go. All right. I thought maybe we weren't going to joke. <laughs> I was going to say Germany, uh, <laughs> um, which I find hysterical. Uh, the bid for power. The West tries to tame a legendary beast. My God, this is World War II. However, this creature ended up attacking the East, resulting in a costly war for both sides. So um, it reuses Ocarina of Time's objects and enemies. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. It's got a night. I guess it's got a night and day mode, hence dawn and dusk. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know what it is? I think it kind of maybe almost the way of Castlevania II. You know, dawn side is ever uh, bright, cheery. Yeah. Dusk side is dark and cold. Oh, that's probably the east and west. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, yeah, this, that's kind of cool. Honestly, I mean, uh, I hate to say it, but next time you may uh, see that up there, you may want to contact them. Uh, I may just if I haven't, you know, hadn't dropped money on that PS3. <laughs> um, 
There are multiple versions to choose from. Those are the ROMs. Oh, I yeah. guess with different versions of Ocarina of Time. Yeah, I'm definitely. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I'm definitely interested oh. in it. I'm, I'm curious to see how much they are selling it for. Also, uh, you can play this version on an original N64 console using a flash cart, such as the EverDrive 64. Oh, nice. And you do not need an N64 expansion pack to play this version. Very cool. All right. Yeah, those EverDrives are pretty interesting for yeah. ROMs. No, I'm definitely interested in that game for sure. Okay. Um, so get me some more information since you play the game on every week. Well, until I get my new car, yeah. Speaking yeah. of which, I got to go shopping. So yeah. I'm so, playing. Yeah, um, the last thing I want to share with you before we wrap up, yes. uh, there is a new multiplayer game on the PlayStation 4 you need to download. All right. Um, it is called Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout. <laughs> okay. It's a multiplayer online game. It's basically Wipeout, where you play with 60 other people online. Oh, jeez. And you okay. go through a, obviously, you go through a series of rounds, and, and at the end, one person is oh, that's left standing. Cool. Uh, it's super fun. Okay. Um, my friends and I have been playing it all week. It was made by a small indie company. Mm -hmm. And okay. it, apparently they weren't prepared for how <laughs> popular the game was going to be. Yeah. So after the first day, it, um, their uh, servers crashed. There you go. So they've been, they've, been, they've been rushing to fix it. They're still dealing with a few issues because, again, the game is way too popular. Mm -hmm. uh, for this small indie studio. And congratulations on them for making something so cool. Yeah. The important thing, though, to point out about it, at least on the PS4, for August, free to download. So download it now. Oh, okay. It's part of the play, uh, PlayStation Plus? Uh, yes. So free All to right. download. Um, and then free to play. Obviously, you can buy, you can buy stuff in their DLC store. Of course. You know, and you get basically... And the, the characters are really cute. You're kind of this little blobby kind of guy. <laughs> um, and then you and you, you dress him with different skins and stuff mm. like that. It's really it's really cute. And then the boards are just like I said, they're just absurd wipeout. In fact, there are there are levels in the game that I've seen on wipeout. <laughs> okay. So I'm like, all right, but it's it's really fun. My friends and I are obsessed with it. Right now. Awesome. Actually, just one final thing just dawned on me because you know for those you know I'll tell you now before I forget because I've been doing this this past week. So I've been working from home. And even though I won't go into details about my profession, it does involve, uh, you know, sometimes being on the phone. So, mm -hmm. and as much as I can wear the headphones, because I'm using my cell phone for the calls, I sometimes do that also so I can listen to music. Uh, but I don't want to drain the battery on my phone. So long story short, I use my television to play YouTube because I can turn the picture off and just right. play the audio. I just, and there's various pages, don't get me, there's none in particular. But I came across a couple of pages that just basically all it is is just like N64 game music. Like the very oh. soothing, relaxing game music. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and they're like four-hour blocks. So, nice. um, again, there, there's a ton of them. Go check them out. That was pretty cool. Um, and it's a good background because there's really no words to anything, so I can't get mm -hmm. caught listening to like the DMX or something. Right. <laughs> all right, well, that's awesome. So, all righty. So with cool. that... Uh, and I guess we'll uh, we'll call it at this point. Yes, I think. I, as think, I, we, now, I think we talked enough. That, that, that's why we do this. We should be happy that we do that. We talk, um, even though I finally caught my breath finally at this point. So yeah, it only took an hour. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go uh, maybe pre-order a Jeep. We'll see what happens. You gonna pre-order a Jeep and a Miss Pac-Man tabletop? Maybe twenty-eight bucks a month. I can swing that. Mm -hmm. So. All right. And where can they find us? Uh, you guys can find us on facebook.com slash retro gamers podcast uh, on Instagram at retro gamers podcast on Twitter at retro gamers pod. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yep. Ooh, getting the, I'm getting these right. Yeah. Very there. Uh, retro gamers.com. If you want to the retro gamers.com, if you want to check out our website, you can email us at email at the retro gamers.com. And obviously you can listen to us wherever you listen to your podcasts and you can watch us on YouTube. And the sun finally came out. So with that, Ant, have a good week. Good luck with everything. Good luck finding your car, buddy. Yeah, I know. Thank you. It's and never folks, fun to do. <laughs> <laughs> we will catch you right here next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast.